Today, I have some pretty Valentine's decor. Keep watching. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. We are going to start off with a rectangle Dollar Tree sign. This one happens to be from Fall, but you can use any rectangle sign that you find. I'm going to use some of this heart lace that came from Dollar Tree and a napkin from Dollar Tree. This is actually a tea towel and I got it last year. So of course we're going to start by taking off all of our tags and our extra stuff. I want to save this family word and use it in the fall, so I'm just going to scrape it off. And I'm going to use my white chalk paint because as you see this napkin is kind of a sheer and I don't want to be able to see brown behind it. I want it to be bright white. So we'll do a coat of this on the back. It doesn't have to be perfect. And in the meantime, while it's drying, I'm going to take my little mini press here and use it like an iron. And I'm going to get all of the wrinkles out of this part of the towel. I'm just getting an idea of how I want it to lay and it fits nicely. And I'm going to trim that out so I don't have a bunch of extra to deal with. I'm leaving on the edge on the bottom and I'm going to use that right on the edge of the bottom of the sign. Then I'm just going to start by wrapping the corners so nothing gets distorted. Too much pulling and stretching will make it look um, curved or warped. It'll do that to the image. So you just want to be sure that you're working on each side, flipping it over, looking at it, and making sure that you haven't pulled anything out of place. We want this to be high end, and I think we achieved that. So I'm going to take some of that lace ribbon on the bottom and just measure it off there lightly and go right above where it has the seam. And this will cover the seam nicely and give us a little bit of a, almost like a fringe that hangs off the bottom. I think that's pretty and you can see, you can really see the lace that way rather than putting it completely over the white fabric, then you wouldn't be able to see the pattern. But you can see here clearly that it's hearts. Now I'm going to embellish the baskets. And I'm just using some of this. You can get some of this. You can use Baker's twine or jute, whatever you have. And I've had this for a while. Not sure where it came from, but you can get it pretty much anywhere. Probably at Dollar Tree. Make a little bow and then trim it down as long as you want it. You can adjust the length of the loops by just pulling on the tails. And I know this seems like a simple bow, but some people really struggle with this. So I want to be sure that I give you a clear idea of what to do so you don't struggle. I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue and just attach that there to the front of my basket. Gives a little interest and dimension. I think it really pretties it up. These are pretty DIYs. I'm going to make them pretty. I know I'm out of the frame here. Forgive me for that. But I'm just putting a white little wooden heart here right on top of a balloon that was there. And it covers it up completely. It's going to give some dimension. And then I'm going to put one of these little hearts that you can get from Dollar Tree on it. So pretty much you could do this entire project with Dollar Tree items. One more bow right to the center of the little grapevine wreath that's on that white piece and then we can put a hanger in the back. You can use it as a leaner if you want to, but we're gonna hang it, and I'm just using some scrap ribbon from Christmas. I'm putting that on the back, and the loop is big enough that you can move it back and forth to make sure that it is centered correctly on your wall and hanging nice and straight. Very easy. Okay, for the next project, we're gonna do a little shabby chic or Victorian inspired piece. I've got some of these cards that I thrifted, and I love these. These are all kind of a Victorian Valentine's Day cards. They came in a little set, and I'm just looking here. I want you to be able to see them because they're so precious. And then just choosing the ones that I want to use for this project. I've also got some thrifted pieces here, um, metal hearts, and then I have this little plastic key that's got some little bobbles hanging off. This is my vintage Victorian-like ribbon. Love this stuff. And then an envelope that's metal and mine came from the thrift store but it looks like it came from dollar general and then you can get these at dollar tree sometimes i'm going to use my satin spray paint to just give it like an off-white color and then the metal pieces are going to get a little dabble of this gold paint and this is just to kind of give it some age and also to match a little bit better with our decor now i'm going to use some of my white wax 
and these, uh, this product and the paint also, I do believe, came from Plaid. So I love using the waxes from Plaid. I've had a lot of good luck with these. I've had a lot of beautiful projects come from this. And I'm just going to show you what you can do if you want to tone down the brassy look of a gold. You can use this white wax. Just give it a good coat. I used a stiff brush to put it on so I could get in all those little cracks around the little flower patterns and the letters. And then I'm just using a clean rag and wiping it all back down. And that gives it just the slightest amount of dullness, which I like. And you can see the before and after. So you can choose whichever look you like best. Now I'm going to take this little key and I'm going to do the same thing here. I do end up removing the little ornaments that are on there. I kept the heart and the bow and I saved the cat for something else. But I'm just putting this on with a brush because you have to get in those little tiny spots. So I got a different brush that's a little softer to get in all those cracks. And then I'm going to take a clean stiff brush and use it to wipe all of the wax off, well, all the extra wax off, I'll put it that way, on this one. And then it gives it an aged look and it coordinates nicely with the heart, the large heart that we did. And I will be using those little pieces, but I did take them off, but I'll be using those in this project. Okay, so these are just little heart, I guess you could put them on a tree, um, I'm gonna cut the little hangers off because we're going to make picks. Here is my dried envelope. Doesn't matter what the inside looks like because you're not going to see that in the project. I'm going to take some foam blocks and I just like to use my metal ruler to just slice those into the size I need them. I'm going to place those down in there and then break that other half into two pieces and shove it down in the sides. Now we have plenty to hold it down. You could always take some hot glue if you want to hold those in place. I'm going to take a variety of flowers. Now I've chosen these three cards and I'm looking at the flowers that are in these cards so that I can get the same colors and shapes in my floral arrangement. And I've got some little thrifted rosebuds that are just precious but they don't have stems. Not a problem. I've got these little picks that I thrifted and I'm going to make some stems. So I'm just first going to put a little hot glue. Be sure that you're protecting your hands here. Just a little hot glue like that, let it dry. Then I'm gonna take my wax floral tape, go up to the top. When you pull it, it activates the wax and will make it sticky. And then keep a little tension as you twist going down and it will stick down. A lot of people don't understand the, the tape, they don't like it, but they're not using it correctly. So I'm pulling on it slightly as I'm twisting. And that's what's gonna make it stay in place. Perfect. Now we have a long stem. I've got some of these beautiful fern pieces. They're thrifted, of course. And I'm just gonna start putting these in. This is not gonna be a symmetrical arrangement. This is going to be asymmetrical. It is going to be kind of a, oh, I don't know. I'm not gonna call it a mess. It's just gonna be more free spirited, if you will, because Victorian arrangements don't really have like a really, um, specific you have to do the same thing on the right and left kind of pattern you know like we do in a lot of our ranging so this is going to be a little bit wilder and I love that and I'm just going to start placing down my roses they're my biggest flowers are the ones that are the largest and then I'm going to take my little daisy picks and some more of my little roses and just stick those in there and I'm just kind of eyeballing this there's really no not a lot of balance in here so far and that may drive some people crazy you can just do it however you like however you like it but if you look at the little cards um, looking at my little cards there it's almost like somebody picked flowers and just laid them down they are not in any particular pattern we're gonna do the same thing here even if you have a stem and you want to elongate it just add your pick to it add your hot glue and then put the wax on there little wax tape. Now I'm going to add some of this beautiful blue. I've had these blue picks for a while and this is perfect because they match almost identically to what's in one of the cards. I want to embellish the envelope with a card and this is the one that I chose because it's heart shape. So I'm going to just glue it together 
and you can use a glue stick or tape or you could just tear the back off if you want and I'm going to use little poppets you can get things that are similar to this at Dollar Tree they're just little foam they, they raise up your projects pretty much they're sticky on both sides and I'm going to use this because the front of the envelope is at a slant so I'll be gluing the top part and then the little riser at the bottom will help it stand out so it won't lay flush down now I'm going to make picks with these little hearts and I'm just going to add some hot glue the little pick on the back simple simple I don't use I don't have to use any tape on those they stick nicely now to make these cards into picks this is so simple start by putting your pick down in there as long as you need it to be and remember you can always cut those off add a little glue and then press it down and now you have a beautiful little pick so easy same with this one only this card flips over from the top instead of from the side not a problem and again you could just use one piece but I didn't want to do that I wanted to use the whole card because it's thicker it looks more substantial now I'm taking my little cherub here and putting a little glue on her or him whichever one and I'm gonna start placing the cards down the rest of the arrangement of the flowers will be around these cards because I don't want to cover them up I want them to be center stage so I'll be looking at it and seeing what needs a little bit more and adding to it as I go now I want to add this back on I didn't put wax on the back so it should be fine we're gonna wire it and I just made a little hook and threaded it through the flower I'm gonna kind of twist it together a little bit to make one piece and then feed it through the top where this hole is if there's no hole in yours you don't have to worry about this you can just glue it down there and I am going to help give it a little bit of balance by twisting this into a circle it's gonna help kind of hold it straight and it looks neater a little hot glue will keep it from slipping around and slipping through and then I've just put a little piece of extra fabric right over the top of that to hold it down and to keep my glue from sticking anywhere all right so now I'm just looking around to see what I have pulling some things out and forward and I realize I need something on a smaller scale so these beautiful little blue flowers are perfect I'm gonna stick those all over the place I think the reason I like the like the Victorian type flower arranging is because it's so wild looking and it's it's really like the rustic that I love I know it sounds strange because definitely Victorian is not rustic but there's something shabby chic about it that just really fits into the aesthetic that I like in my home so I do have a special place in my heart for it and that's why I like to focus Valentine's Day you know for a little bit more of this wild kind of stuff I'm adding in the heart picks now here and there and then you could also if you don't have cards I got out those little those little paper hearts over there you can use stuff like that or you can use modern you know little Valentine cards whatever you have for whatever style that you want and if you don't want to do Victorian you certainly don't have to you can use any flowers so from the keychain or the little key I had the heart and I put the heart right on the top of that one card I'm going to replace my hook and you see it's gold now and it was like a silver color before and just using these little jewelry pieces clamps I'm just going to uh, I think the word is pliers I'm gonna put them back down I use the bow on the little cherub's head so now she's a girl for sure and then I'm going to use some of this beautiful lace to put right down over the edge of this metal I felt like it needed to be softened a bit and I wanted the opportunity to use this without making a bow and this is the perfect way to do it I'm just embellishing around the opening of the envelope what do you think this was a very fun project for me I love it very very much all right the next project we are going to be doing a heart round so this is a Dollar Tree piece and this is a thrifted piece and the fabric was also thrifted someone had worked on this themselves and now I'm gonna give it some new life I'm pulling off the staples in the hanger and you could see that it needs to be sanded quite desperately so I am going to get out my sander give it a good sanding and then it's gonna look a little bit better it is not exactly 
round all the way around, but I don't mind that. Remember what I said about rustic? We embrace those imperfections, don't we? Let's take the hanger out of this little palette sign. I'm going to cover the holes with a little masking tape on the back. And then when we flip it over, you can just add a little bit of that spackling right into those little spots. I like to use the back of a, my little rubber spatula to kind of scrape that off so it's nice and even. So that's what you see me doing there. And then I just add it back into my jar to be used another time. I'm going to use this little tool, which now you can get at Dollar Tree. So be sure you look in your crafter square for it. It's very thin. You can cut yourself. Be careful. I've done it many, many times. Now I'm going to mix up a stain with a little bit of this territorial beige and water. Mix it really well. And I will be coloring my nice little piece. And I just used one of those cloths that come from that comes from Dollar Tree. It's the little fuzzy cloths in the auto detail section. And um, it works really good for this. And I'm just rubbing it into that freshly sanded wood to give it a nice solid coat. This is a light coat. And I know that with paint, I can go ahead and use hot glue. We won't have a problem. Had I done this with the, the antiquing wax that I normally use, there might would have been a problem with the glue sticking. All right, now I'm gonna take these little wooden pieces and I'll be covering them with this red and white striped fabric, which I think is very farmhouse and gorgeous. I'm gonna cut it down just so I have some more manageable pieces. And then I'm gonna use my Mod Podge to put this down on the fabric. You're gonna take the pretty side, the nice smooth side, and that's the side that you're gonna be coating with the Mod Podge. I'm just using a matte Mod Podge here, but you can use whichever one you want. And I'm going to lay this face down, the, the uh, sticky side down there, right onto my fabric, trying to be conscious of the stripes that are on there so that everything is lined up nicely and we don't have a bunch of crooked mess. And I'm gonna be doing that with each piece. Now, while it's still wet, I'm gonna go ahead and cut that down, just slice it into manageable pieces so that I can put them aside and let them dry. Now, if you want to, you can go ahead and put your Mod Podge on, um, trim it down a little bit, and go ahead and put your Mod Podge on, which is what I did. Or you can do, let that one side dry first and then go back and apply your Mod Podge on top of that. But, you know, I try to work quickly. I try to get these videos out for you guys and this is how I do it. It's still wet. I'm gonna do it while it's still wet. It's the mess. It truly is a mess, but I don't mind that. Don't mind it at all, it's the life of a crafter. So we're gonna do that with all of them, let them dry overnight, and then I'm gonna come back with my utility knife. They come in three packs from the Dollar Tree. I highly recommend them, just be very careful because they are sharp. And this go right down the edge of the wood and slice off that stiff fabric because now the fabric is like a paper. It is stiff and it will easily come right away. You don't have a lot of fraying or any of those problems. And this really is so much easier than using scissors. You get a nice clean line. Look at that. Perfect. So now what you can do is take a sanding block and just go ahead around all the edges and just kind of go over your edges, which is going to give a little white edge. It's going to kind of um, give it a little aged look. And I'll say that every video because, you know, rustic, that's what we do. And then when all your pieces are sanded, you can go back over with a piece of sandpaper and just scratch it up, rough it up, and make it look like you've had it for some time. I like the love that lasts forever. We're gonna give it some dents and dings, just like relationships. So there we go. Really easy to do. You can skip this part if you want to. You don't have to do this. Now we're gonna put these back down on top of the round. I'm trying to go with the grain um, because the grain of the wood and the stripes together, if they were askew, it would drive me nuts. So I'm just working with it and kind of eyeballing what we're going to do here. I'm going to use plain old hot glue because it's going to be inside my house. If you were to put this outside, it would be a different situation, but this is an inside piece. So hot glue should hold it nicely for you. I'm going to add a little bit of weight just to hold it down while I work on the next pieces. 
So you can grab a Jenga block or something to divide and make a little spacer, which is right here. See, I forgot to show you that part. So now I'm showing you. And it's just going to give you the right spacing between your pieces. You can eyeball it. You know, you don't have to, to do this part. You're not gluing them down. You're just using them as a little placeholder. Y'all, the stripes on the fabric are making my camera do weird things. You should see the end screen. It's kind of craziness. I might need to put a seizure warning on it. All right, so now we're going to make a bow. I'm taking scraps of ribbon that I already had. I've just dovetailed them. They're probably like four inch pieces here. And I'm taking a variety of patterns. I love the plaid. And then I've got the, the little lacy bow fabric there. I have some rickrack in there. Just a bunch of varieties, textures, patterns, colors, kind of craziness. But somehow they all work. So I'm going to add a little piece of that rick rack on top, flip it over, and then we're just going to tie it into a knot or two, and it holds it quite nicely. You can get these in any sewing place, you, you know, any place you can get fabric, and you can dig back through your Christmas stash and see what you have that would work for Valentine's Day, and use that. Use what you got. Save a little bit of money. Lord knows we spend enough during Christmas. So now you're just going to start the process of fluffing things out, you know, curving the dovetails, making everything look exactly how you like it. And when you get it that way, you can just set it aside. We're going to cut another piece of that rick rack because I thought that would be really cute as a hanger. And once we know that it's dry, I'm going to flip it over. Just add a little glue and add this down. And this is going to be our hanger. So now we can add the little bow back onto the hanger, or onto the hanger, not back onto it. Tie it, and you can leave that as part of your bow if you would like. Give it a little extra oomph. And then make sure that it looks pretty and that it is all laying out the way you like it. I like to be sure that all of the different patterns are showing. Now I'm going to give you some options. This is some baby breath sort of looking floral. You could do something like this, which would be really pretty if you like it. Or you could use greenery like I'm going to do. And these are just some thrifted pieces. Um, this is maybe like an evergreen or fern, something like that. But it is still winter, so I think it's appropriate. And just take the pieces that you want, tuck them under the edges, and just use a little bit of hot glue. And press it down. I like to use these clamps. They came from the laundry section in Dollar Tree and they work for thicker projects when you need something just held down. And so that's what I've done there. I'm going to take this button that I have in my button jar, cut the back off because it looks like a little wood half, like a little slice, and I'm just going to add that right in the middle of the boat. And I think it complements the color in the wood round perfectly. I think it is beautifully rustic so we did three projects in this video I've staged it here for you so you can just see how it would look there is our Dollar Tree sign and then see what I mean about the flashing heart it's the patterns my camera trying to focus on the pattern sorry I know it's annoying my beautiful Victorian envelope my Valentine's spilling over with love. My heart spilling over with love. We have over 11,000 subscribers now, y'all. 11,000. Thank you all so very much for stopping by. And I will see you again soon. Bye.